This is the Framework laptop. And this specific laptop is from the third batch last year. I bought it in about September 2021, and I've used it as my exclusive laptop since then. I've used it for everything from light 3D modeling, slicing for 3D printing, all the way up to some computer programming and simulations for fluid flow and dynamics. It's been fine for those applications. A lot of them are single threaded limited anyway, so you don't get a whole lot of performance by having a slightly faster processor with, for, for example, more cores. Uh, this laptop, it had a fairly decent battery life through the time that I've used it. And honestly, I really appreciate the right to repair movement and being able to use this laptop, change out the ports, change out the internals to suit your specific needs and or your needs when you upgrade. And that's really what you're buying here. It's maybe a little more expensive, like I said in my previous video, than what you would get for the equivalent money for performance today. But what you buy with that extra cost is something that you could possibly save money in the future by upgrading. Now, right now, Framework has released 12th gen processor boards and they are pretty expensive. But that's kind of the nature of this being early in the process. And ideally, as more people buy into the idea, the prices will come down as manufacturing increases. So in this one, I wanted to talk about my experience with the Framework laptop as a one year update and discuss three problems that I had while I was using it. Now, the first issue I had with this laptop is the hinge. And it's maybe the most significant issue that I noticed right away. It's the most obvious. And the way I noticed it was not using it on a desk. It's actually fine to use on a desk. And it doesn't feel like it would be an issue. But you, if you notice, as you bring it through its range of motion, which it does have a pretty large range of motion, about past the halfway point, past the 90 degree angle, the force to deflect the screen decreases. And this is an issue because normally you will have the screen deflected a little more than 90 degrees. And then when you go to pick up the laptop, it flattens out. And this is exactly what happens when you are sitting on a bed or a couch and you go to sit up with the laptop. You'll be holding it and then you sit up and then it flattens. And that's not a huge deal, but it does show that there's some quality control or design aspect of the hinge that should be addressed. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But that was the first thing that I noticed. It was something that was apparent in the first month of use. And I chalked it up to just being the nature of the design of this laptop, but other people have noticed it as well. And they've talked about it in the forums. And I will address how Framework addressed each of these issues in the end of this video. Now, the second issue that I had is sometimes the trackpad would not register a click. And it's because it has a single monolithic trackpad and the button is kind of the whole trackpad and it uses the position of your finger to determine whether you're using a right or left click. And I'm not sure if it's software or hardware, but sometimes I would get a left click when I wanted a right click, or I would get no click when I was trying to left click. And this can be a little frustrating. Sometimes it makes me think that I misclicked. Sometimes I feel the click, but get no response on the screen. And sometimes I would get clicks when I wasn't actually clicking the button. So that was something that I noticed after a couple months, it wasn't readily apparent right away. So I believe that it might be a small hardware issue or maybe something that was baked into one of the software updates since then, but it didn't happen a lot, but it was enough for me to notice. It was more than once, maybe less than 20 times in the past year that I've had it. And the way I noticed it was actually scrolling through computer code. If I was trying to put the mouse cursor in a specific location in a, you know, a big page file of text, I wasn't able to click to put it exactly where I wanted and I would wonder what happened and then I would click again and then it would go there. So, so my guess is that it's something with the hardware with the trackpad they're using or the way it's translating click into the actual Windows input click. And then my third issue, this is so much less of an issue of the laptop itself. I think the build quality is pretty solid, but I wanted to talk about kind of the hardware compatibility in general. Right now, there is not a whole lot offered, and there are a few things that I wish were. For example, the 12th gen processors is a motherboard only, which is fine, and it's very expensive. So I will not be upgrading my laptop, but it would be nice if there was a cheaper upgrade or maybe a way that you can trade with other people who have upgraded to maybe the i7 11th gen, and I wanna get rid of my i5 11th gen, for example. The second thing involving the hardware is the design of the expandable slots. So I'm sure if you're aware, if you're watching this video on the bottom of this laptop, you can push this button and pull out these slots. And, and they do take a little bit of force to come out, but it's not too bad. 
But once you take them out, you can swap them for other things. And all this is, is an extension for the Type-C USB port that's in there. And if you have the Type-C to Type-C, I'm pretty sure this is just a pass-through or it might have some other stuff inside of it, but not much. It's basically a female Type-C to a male Type-C. One issue that I had was if I was doing some photography, I would have my SD card for a large camera like the one I'm using to record this video, and I would want to get the photos onto here. So instead of using the micro SD card reader, which I did buy and it does come with, other than the micro SD card reader, there is not an option for a full size SD card reader. And because of that, I have to use a dongle or an adapter of some sort to connect a type C USB to a full size SD card dongle. And the reason for that is because the width of these is just barely too small. It's not quite big enough to give you the same structural support that you would have in one of these. And because the SD card is almost the width of the port. If they were to instead design these, so they took up a couple millimeters more space and maybe reduce the amount of space in between the two ports, that could allow for them to have full-size SD cards, full-size display ports, which they do have, and then they do have full-size HDMI. But things like full-size Ethernet is hard because of the thickness of these, and I think they're working on that with a flap down like we've seen on other thin and light laptops. But things like the full-size SD card, which I think would be very valuable, uh, are missing, and you have to use a dongle. And that's really unfortunate because if you're using a laptop to travel, you're very likely to be doing photography or something like that, and you would like to be able to use your full-size SD card to get full transfer speeds through USB 3.0 into the laptop. That would be ideal. It's too much to ask for them to support CEF Express cards because those are much bigger, and honestly, you should be using a dedicated reader to get the full, full read speed off of those types of cards anyway. But for most of us, general hobbyists were using full-size SD cards, not so much the micro SD unless you're using a GoPro or something like that. And it would really be nice if there was an adapter that fit one, but I don't think that's going to happen just because of the design of these. There's not enough space to fit one in here. At the very least, it would be very marginal to fit it inside, and I just don't think that would work too well on a large-scale production. So those were my three issues with the Framework laptop. Overall, I've been pretty happy with it, and I want to take a minute here at the end to discuss what Framework has done to address some of these issues. So for my first issue, the hinge has now been replaced. If you buy a Framework laptop from them, it will have the updated hinge in it, or you could buy the hinge, and I'll put the price for that up in the post edit uh, for the hinge replacement yourself. And that's really one of the benefits of this methodology. You have a laptop that can be upgraded or have parts changed out, and if there's something that's maybe not defective, but not optimized or not a final design or not the best design, those things can be updated later. And as long as it fits in this chassis, you could buy that part and upgrade it yourself. And I think that's what you're paying for when you buy a laptop like this. And that's what makes it really cool. The second issue is the trackpad. And I've seen many posts on the forums, on Frameworks forums and on Reddit that address the trackpad. And it wasn't just me. A couple other people have had issues with the trackpad as well a couple different types of issues, but it seems like there was hardware issues with the early trackpads and those are also able to be replaced. If you are still within warranty, it sounds like some of those can be replaced under warranty. If you're not, you can buy the trackpad yourself. It's relatively inexpensive. I'll put the price up in post editing and that's something that you can address on your own. And then finally, the last issue, this is the one that I've been dealing with maybe the most is some of the hardware things. I would like a marketplace where I can exchange parts and they do have one on Frameworks website, but it's not really that large yet. And there's not a whole lot of things on the marketplace. They're adding more of their first party items. But there's not a good place or way to send in your old parts to maybe sell them used to buy a used part or anything like that. You're still left to do that on your own, maybe on Reddit or something. And honestly, not a lot of people have these laptops and there's no third party market for them. So that's not ideal. I would like the expansion ports to be a little wider so they could accommodate a full size SD card. It seems like that that would be the prudent thing to do is design it so that you can fit all kinds of SD cards, not just micro SD cards. And the way to do that is to make your expansion ports just a little wider. In addition to that, they are working on an ethernet port. That's great because you'll be able to get full gigabit ethernet through USB 3.0 ideally, 
and very likely it will involve a flap like we've seen in other thin and light laptops. So those are the things that I've seen coming down the pipe. If you have a framework laptop and you've been enjoying it, let me know in the comments. If you have any issues other than the ones that I've discussed here, let me know and I'll check them out with my own laptop and see if I have them as well. Other than that, I've been pretty happy with the laptop. I'm happy with this purchase and I will continue using it for years to come. Thank you and I'll see you next time.